When we first learned about the topic of life during a pandemic, all four of us immediately thought of the essential workers that we saw putting our lives on the lines at grocery stores, hospitals, and restaurants during the shelter in place. As we looked deeper into the subject, we discovered disturbing truths about the treatment and lives of our working class. Even before the pandemic shut down our stores and wiped out certain businesses, our economy had major issues. Now, the widespread inequality, stagnant wages, and suffering middle class have been brought to light. From 1991 to 2010 alone, the number of American adults living in middle-class households fell from 62% to 59%. And when compared to 11 European nations, it is found that the United States has the smallest middle class. But it is true that people are getting paid more today than they did in the 70s. So why is our middle class shrinking? The national minimum wage has been stagnant since 2009. And it's stayed at essentially the same level since the 80s because it doesn't increase annually with inflation. With the cost of living steadily going up, what America once knew as the middle class is now nearly non-existent. These issues are only getting stronger during the global pandemic. Since the beginning of the pandemic, over 36 million Americans have filed for unemployment. The national unemployment rate has risen to 14.7%, the worst in our country since the Great Depression. In California, one-fifth of the state's labor force, 4.2 million people, have filed for unemployment. Our country is grossly under-equipped to help our citizens when they need us. People are unable to reach unemployment offices, waiting for weeks for a simple reply, and are barely getting enough money and resources to get by. Unfortunately, for the people that do still have a job, the situation is just as dire. Many business owners are getting turned away from banks when they apply for loans, and even if they do get them, only 25% of that loan goes to keeping the business afloat. We have received at most of our restaurants the PPP loans. Those loans are not for the restaurant. Those loans are to provide stimulus money for payroll. The, the dichotomy is that, you know, we can hire people now and have money to pay for them, but there's, we're not open. It'd be nice if some of the money could be earmarked for us uh, to use in our working capital reserves so that we, we are able to pay bills once we reopen. The unexpected duration of this stay in place has really had a huge effect on both of my businesses. They've been completely closed. All my employees are on unemployment and we're not sure when we're gonna be able to reopen again. It took months for some of my employees to get unemployment. The system kept crashing, the website was overwhelmed. So it took some tenacity to get it done, but now everyone's getting it. I have been working at Whole Foods for almost two and a half years. I still work during the pandemic because I have bills to pay and rents due. People can't live on minimum wage. Like minimum wage is just not, it's not a livable wage. That's why people are working two, three jobs. You can't live in Mill Valley on a $17 wage. You can't live in Marin County on a $30 wage. It's impossible. And if you're not working in a job that's essential, you're not getting any money. Minimum wage workers of larger corporations are being forced to work with few benefits and no paid sick leave unless they can present a positive test. America's working class is on the front lines of a disaster, and these workers traditionally draw little respect in American society. For example, grocery clerks in the U.S. make an average hourly salary of $11.25 with little to no benefits or part-time scheduling. I do not believe I've been treated fairly by Amazon or Whole Foods. They gave everybody a $2 raise, which was nice, but starting the end of this week, they are taking that away. Um, so we will no longer have benefits from the company for going to work. But it's so frustrating for somebody to you know, risk getting sick constantly every day and having to deal with people every day to not have any benefits for going to work, especially when all of my benefits are about to be taken away at the end of the week. Because small businesses are struggling to stay afloat, giant conglomerates like Amazon, Instacart, and Walmart are gaining an increasingly stronger hold over their employees. People have nowhere else to turn right now. So they have to put up with longer hours, fewer benefits, and poor health coverage. 
These companies also have the funds available to fire people at will. The most recent target group has been employees protesting and calling for better working conditions. Additionally, many people who have lost their jobs at smaller companies have turned to these corporate monsters as their last resort. The government has not passed any requirements regarding benefits, health coverage, or sick pay for these large companies, under the pretense that they have enough money and resources to help their employees without incentive. The way the government's running it right now is, when this is all over, you have to pay immediately all of those three months of like rent and stuff on your fourth month. How can you pay three months of bills and rent on top of your fourth month when you haven't been getting paid those three months? History has shown us that widespread frustration to do with low wages and insufficient worker protection can lead to lasting social change. For example, after the plague of Justinian, worker incomes doubled, and the Black Death led to three raises in just one year for textile workers in northern France. But some service workers today are less than certain about positive change coming about as a result of the pandemic. Now that people need their groceries, they need grocery store workers. But I think when this is over, I think many people will go back to the mindset of you're just a grocery store worker. Before the pandemic, people should already have been getting paid more for doing the jobs that they do. Some people don't realize that there are so many more things going on for us running across the floor and, and different complications that we're not used to, that we're still getting used to and they can be really impatient. And then there are all those other people that are just like, thank you for being here. Thank you for making my latte. I do not believe that essential workers will have more power after the pandemic. Um, I don't think they have power now. I'm really not sure how more power would be given to essential workers. It's not typically the people that are heard. Usually corporations and the government seem to make changes based off of donors and people with money and I don't think essential workers always fit that bill at least in the context of a grocery store worker. I hope things change positively and I hope people start getting paid more. Hopefully having the pandemic shows that and changes that but I don't know if it's going to. The coronavirus pandemic did not cause our nation's widespread unemployment issues or the massive equity gap, but it brought them to the forefront of our nation's mind. This raises an essential question for America. How will we treat these workers when they are no longer considered essential?